Hello everyone, thank you for inviting me to talk about academic writing. My name is Marie Smith and I will be your official tour guide today. I always enjoy a great grammar adventure. Today we are going to talk about types of academic writing, the writing process, common grammar mistakes, commonly confused words, and more. Academic writing is different than writing a resume, it's different than writing a blog post, and it's different than writing a magazine article. Examples of academic writing include literature review, annotated bibliography, research proposal, compare contrast. There are additional examples as well. There is more than one model for the writing process. An example that's commonly used in academic writing is pre-writing, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. Pre-writing refers to activities that you do before you write your draft. Examples of pre-writing activities include taking notes, interviewing people, listing, questioning, reading, analyzing, free writing, mind mapping, outlining. There are many examples of pre-writing activities. Drafting and writing refers to putting your ideas into sentences and paragraphs. Revising and editing are different. I would like to provide some clarification regarding revising and editing. Revising refers to examining the content of your documents. During the revision stage, it's helpful to use the ARRR approach. Adding, is there any additional information that your reader needs to know? Rearranging, is your information presented in a logical order? Removing, are there any unnecessary details? Is there anything that's irrelevant or redundant that could be removed? And replacing, could you change anything to make your expressions or arguments stronger? Editing refers to proofreading and correcting errors related to language usage and grammar. While we are editing, we look at spelling, capitalization, punctuation, sentence structure, subject-verb agreement, verb tense, and more. There's more than one way to edit. You can self-edit and look at your own documents. You can meet with your peers and do peer editing. You can participate in writer's workshop. You can set up conferences with your instructor. It's very important to edit. Publishing refers to preparing, submitting, and presenting a polished piece for your intended audience. So now that we've reviewed the writing process, pre-writing, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing, I'd like to talk about a few common grammar mistakes. There are many things to think about in academic writing. Subject-verb agreement, parallel structure, capitalization, punctuation, how to use dashes, how to use numbers, how to use symbols, acronyms. There are additional things to think about as well. Let's talk about a few common grammar mistakes. You may recognize this as an acronym. When using an acronym, remember to spell out an acronym the first time it appears, followed by the acronym in parentheses. After the first reference, then the acronym may be used in place of spelled out words. For example, is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? It's grammatically incorrect. Let's try another one. In this example, the words are spelled out and the acronym is in parentheses after the spelled out words. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. To make an acronym plural, add a lowercase s. For example, certified public accountants. CPA S. The C, the P, and the A are uppercase, and the S is lowercase. 
Remember, do not put an apostrophe S and do not use an uppercase S at the end of the acronym. Certified Public Accountant, CPA, all in uppercase letters. And plural, Certified Public Accountants, CPA, all uppercase with a lowercase s. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. Let's talk about capitalization. Remember to capitalize proper nouns. For example, names of people, specific companies, and specific associations. Remember to capitalize academic terms. For example, spring 2020. Capitalize a position title if it follows a specific person's name. When referencing a position title without a name, it does not need to be capitalized. Lexi Smith, Career Development Coordinator, was a guest presenter in my sociology course yesterday. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. Career Development Coordinator is capitalized because we're talking about a specific Career Development Coordinator named Lexi Smith. An academic advisor discussed majors and careers during our sociology class yesterday. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. Academic advisor is lowercase because we're not talking about a specific academic advisor. Lexi Smith is an active member of the National Career Development Association. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. National Career Development Association is capitalized because it's a specific association. Lexi Smith is a member of many associations. Is this grammatically correct? Or grammatically incorrect. This is grammatically correct. Notice that the word associations is lowercase because we're not talking about a specific association. Let's talk about numbers. In general, spell out numbers 0 through 10 and use numerals for 11 and above, and use numerals for Roman numerals and spell out the first number when two numbers follow one another in a sentence or phrase. For example, Jennifer purchased two 12-inch shelves. Use numerals when referencing pages, tables, and graphs. Use numerals for all percentages and decimals, including percentages and decimals that contain numbers 0 through 10. If the first word of a sentence is a number, you'll want to spell out that number. Keep in mind that there are many exceptions when it comes to numbers in academic writing. 60 students attended the book fair last week. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct because the first word in this particular sentence is a number. If the first word in a sentence is a number, it's always spelled out. So the word 60 is spelled out. Let's talk about signs and symbols. A dollar sign should be used when referencing dollar amounts. A percentage sign should be used when referencing percentages. You would not spell these words out. Is this grammatically correct? Or grammatically incorrect. This is grammatically incorrect. You would use the percentage sign. You would not spell out the word percent. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct because a percentage sign is used in the sentence. Remember, we do not spell out the word percent when referencing percentages in academic writing. Let's talk about hyphen, dash, n dash, and m dash. 
Dashes and hyphens are not the same. Dashes and hyphens are different lengths and serve different functions. Hyphens are used to join words. According to the dictionary, a hyphen is used to divide or to compound words, word elements, or numbers. For example, on campus, self-motivated, first class. There is more than one version of a dash. There's an N dash and an M dash. A good way to remember which one is which is an N dash EN is about the width of the letter N on your keyboard. And an M dash EM is about the width of the letter M on your keyboard. So the M dash is a little bit longer than the N dash. An N dash is generally used to replace the word to or through in a date range or in a range of values. For example, pages 13 through 26, or Oakwood kickball team beat Redwood kickball team 18 to 1, or years 2010 to 2014. See how the N dash replaced the word to or through in these examples? An M dash, EM, is generally used to replace a comma or a parenthetical phrase. It's also important to be aware of correlative conjunctions. Either, or, neither, nor, both, and, not only, but also, whether, or. These are used together. If they're not used together, it's probably not grammatically correct. If you're using the word either in a sentence, what word would also be included in that same sentence? That's right. You'd use the word either in the first part of the sentence and or in the second part of the sentence. If you're using the word neither in a sentence, what word would you also likely see in that same sentence? That's correct. The first part of the sentence would say neither and the second part of the sentence would contain nor. Neither, nor. If you're using the word both in a sentence, what other word would you likely see in that same sentence? That's correct. If you're using the word both in a sentence, you'll probably also be using the word and later in that same sentence. If you're using the phrase not only, what other phrase would you likely see in that same sentence? Not only, but also. If you're using the word whether in a sentence, what other word would you likely be using in that same sentence? If you're using the word whether in a sentence, you'll likely also be using the word or later in that same sentence. Common correlative conjunctions include either or, neither nor, both and, whether or, and more. I will either call or text you before midnight tonight. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct because we're using the word either and we're also using the word or in the same sentence. I will neither call you nor text you ever again. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. We're using the word neither and we're also using the word nor, which is grammatically correct. It would be incorrect to say, I will neither call or text. Grammatically, it would be, I will neither call you nor text you ever again. That's grammatically correct. Avoid ending a sentence with a preposition. So do not end a sentence with the word for, of, in, at, with prepositions are within a sentence. Avoid ending a sentence with a preposition. Point of view is the perspective from which you write an essay. There are typically three points of view, first person, second person, and third person. In each of these points of view, we use different pronouns. If you're writing in first person, you use the pronouns I and we. If you're writing in second person, you use the pronoun you. If you're writing in third person, use pronouns he, she, they, and additional pronouns. One of the most common errors in writing occurs when a writer shifts points of view. It's important to be aware of verb tense. 
Remember to use gender-neutral words. For example, use the word mail carrier instead of mailman or mailwoman. Use the word firefighter instead of fireman or firewoman. Use the word server instead of waiter or waitress. Use the word flight attendant instead of steward or stewardess. It's important to be aware of gender-neutral words. Ideally, paragraphs should have unity, support, and coherence. Everything should refer back to the main point, provide examples and supporting details, and make sure one point leads to another. Parallel structure is extremely important. It's a repetition of a chosen grammatical form within a sentence. Ideally, each item or idea in your sentence should follow the same grammatical pattern. Let's provide some examples of parallel structure. The student was asked to write his report quickly, accurately, and thoroughly. You'll know that it has parallel structure because you can also say the sentence correctly one at a time. Let me demonstrate. The student was asked to write his report quickly. The student was asked to write his report accurately. The student was asked to write his report thoroughly. That's parallel structure. It's grammatically correct. Okay, your turn. Janet likes to read, write, and draw after class. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? You're right, it's grammatically correct. Janet likes to read, write, and draw after class. Let's test the parallel structure. Janet likes to read after class. Janet likes to write after class. Janet likes to draw after class. It's grammatically correct and it has parallel structure. Academic writing is different than writing a resume, writing a blog post, or writing a magazine article. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? This is grammatically correct. Academic writing is different than writing a resume, writing a blog post, or writing a magazine article. Let's test the parallel structure. Academic writing is different than writing a resume. Academic writing is different than writing a blog post. Academic writing is different than writing a magazine article. They're, they're grammatically correct separately and together. It has parallel structure, and it's grammatically correct. Let's talk about commonly confused words. Accept and accept. They sound similar, although they are different. Accept with an A is to receive. And accept with an E is to take or to leave out. So what do you think? Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? He accepts defeat well. This is grammatically correct. Is this grammatically correct or grammatically incorrect? The sentence, please recycle all crayons except for the red ones, is grammatically correct. Effect and effect. Effect with an A refers to influence. Effect with an E refers to a result. It's and it's. IT apostrophe S is a contraction for it is or it has. Keep in mind that in academic writing, we do not recommend using contractions at all. Not just it's, IT apostrophe S, but we don't recommend using any contractions anywhere in your academic writing. And ITS, it's, indicates possessive. For example, it's her bedtime, it is her bedtime, it is. It's been a long time since I saw her. In this example, it's, I-T apostrophe S, represents it has. It has been a long time since I saw her. The jury has reached its decision. In this example, it's, I-T-S, represents a possessive. Remember, if you can replace the word it, with the word his or with the word her, then there is no apostrophe. And remember, I-T-S apostrophe is never grammatically correct. Farther and further. Farther refers to physical distance. For example, this building is farther away than I expected it to be. And further refers to figurative distance and non-physical distances. Here's a hint. Further usually can be replaced with the word more. Here's a few examples. Further research is needed. This product needs further testing. 
As you can see in each of these examples, the word further can be replaced with the word more and the sentence will still make sense. More research is needed. This product needs more testing. And as you can see, that same hint about the word more does not work with the word farther with an A. For example, this building is farther away than I expected it to be. You couldn't say, this building is more away than I expected it to be. It doesn't make sense. So that's a great hint. I had a great time today talking with you about types of academic writing, the writing process, common grammar mistakes, and commonly confused words. It's been a great grammar adventure. I enjoyed talking with you about academic writing. Thanks for watching.